All right, guys, so we're finally at sexual reproduction, so we're going to go over the reproductive system. First thing you need to know when we're talking about the genders here specifically, we're talking about physical and biological genders only. Anything else is a matter of your opinion or whatever. So when a female body goes through changes, usually their hormones cause breast development, widening of hips, boys. They grow facial hair, they have mass muscle development, and they have a deepening of their voices. Depending on which hormones are more dominant inside of each person, these changes will take effect. There are some times where a female may have higher levels of testosterone than estrogen, and that will cause some issues. Also, I know you guys are going to ask, so I'm just going to add in the video. There is a possibility that someone may have both forms of genitalia. That being said, there is no such thing as a true human hermaphrodite. Usually because of the amount of levels of one specific hormone over the other, you tend to be quote unquote one gender over the other based on just the main hormone because that will cause the specific changes in your body and that will cause your specific type of genitalia to be active while the other one is not. All right, so the male reproductive system in this PowerPoint, it kind of skims over the female, but I will be adding extra for the female parts since it just focuses solely on male. Um, so for the male reproductive parts, we already went over the basic changes. Overall, basically, they'll get muscle development, facial hair. Um, the main part, though, is that they start to release sperm. Like I said in the meiosis one, guys can make sperm until they die. Females have a limited amount of eggs. So while we're on the subject of sperm, you have the LH cells, which are going to increase the amount of testosterone in the body. It is the luteinizing hormone. You also have physical changes. Again, facial hair, muscular development, deepening of the voices. You have testosterone that is released because of the LH cell stimulating it. And the FSH, which is just a follicle stimulating hormone, which will help develop the sperm. Um, right after you give birth, basically most boys will have their testes actually attached to them as time goes on the testes will drop. The main reason for this is because sperm is very temperature sensitive. If it is too hot, they basically just denature and fall apart. So you want it to be at an area where it's not too hot but not too cold so that the sperm are functional for the sake of reproduction, which is why the balls drop. Um, if, they are, if they were to stay close to the body, your core temperature is very hot, the sperm would not be able to make it. Um, I'm going to skip over these slides just so that I can show you guys a visual. Let me just... There go. All right, so the basic sperm development, you are going to have tiny tubules. You can't see them from this picture, but you have seminiferous tubules here in the testes. That's where the sperm will develop. Then it will move to the epididymis, which they will basically mature. Remember, you start off with diploid cells. Eventually, they go through meiosis, and then they'll actually mature into the haploid cells that we need, which is where this will happen. Um, you'll basically store them until then. Then it's going to go up through the vas deferens, which is, again, going to go all the way over up to the abdomen cavity. It's going to merge with the urethra. The urethra is just where you guys are going to... It's a tube where you're basically going to excrete. It's basically going to be like a a passageway you can either pee or you can release sperm. You cannot do both at the same time. So that's going to go through here, go through the to through the urethra, and then it's going to be excreted. Um, you'll also notice glands. You'll have this gland as well as the prostate all in the same area. Um, for the glands, the main reason that you have the glands there and the seminal vesicle is just basically to prep the sperm so that they can survive in the acidity in the acidic environment that is the female reproductive tract. So again, you're trying to make sure that the sperm reaches its goal. This is the best way to set it up. All right, so the female reproductive system, the main function of the female system is basically just to produce an, uh, an egg cell. Um, it's ova. If it's more than one singular, it's ovum. So I'll just be referring it to either egg or ovum. Um, also, most of the work that comes with actually having the baby created is going to take place in the female reproductive 
system. So it's going to be very delicate in the form that, uh, in the way that it sets everything up. So starting off, main reproductive organ is the ovaries. Um, as a female reaches puberty, they're going to release FSH and LH. They're going to have different functions from any of the hormones you'd see again in guys. The main function here is to make sure that the ovaries start to develop. There's a good amount of estrogen and you're able to start producing the eggs. So the hypothalamus has indirect control of the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary has a whole bunch of hormones that it's going to release and it's going to help stimulate different parts of the reproductive organs as well as just your organs in general. So for your reproductive glands, the gonads, which are your reproductive organs, are going to be the ovaries and the testes in both. Um, the main function is producing gametes and then the secretion of the sex hormones. Females will produce the eggs and secrete estrogen. Males will produce sperm and secrete testosterone. Before I go into the actual fertilization, we're going to go through the female track just so that as I go through this, you're going to be able to familiarize yourself with what I'm talking about. All right, so the main parts of the uterus, you have the main opening at the at the bottom, you have the vagina, the OS internal and external is basically just the name of the opening, then you'll actually have the cervix where all, everything happens. You have the myometrium, so this is the middle layer of the uterus, the middle layer is mostly there for contractions. So when it comes to childbirth, this will be the area where contraction will happen. You do have the endometrium. Now the endometrium is the inside layer. When a female is preparing for fertilization, basically this layer will thicken with blood. Um, it has sort of two layers in it, the main layer and then the functional layer, which is the one that's going to thicken, getting ready for whatever is going to happen. Um, the amount of glands and vessels will increase now this is the layer where implantation will happen if the egg is fertilized. If it isn't fertilized, what happens is that this layer built itself up and got upset that you didn't make a baby and rips itself off completely and that is what's being excreted during the menstrual cycle. Um, the main part where the egg actually forms is the ovaries. The ovaries will release an egg into this area. Fertilization will happen in the fallopian tubes, implantation will happen here, and then childbirth. So fertilization and all the basic steps. When we're talking about fertilization, what you're going to be talking about specifically is the fusion of the sperm and the egg. So in order for this to happen, first of all, while a male may, may release multiple amounts of sperm, not all of them will make it. Again, like we said, the female reproductive tract is very acidic. Maybe some of them are not adapt properly into that area. Um, the fastest swimmer will basically make it to the egg, and the way that this happens is, I'm going to skip ahead. So, the actual sperm has a head, a midpiece, and a tail. In the head, there is an enzyme. Now, the enzyme here is going to basically go into the barrier of the outside of the egg and, for lack of a better word, eat its way into the egg. Once the sperm eats its way into the egg, you're going to have the actual layers of fertilization. So ovulation, basically the female body goes through everything. The endometrium starts to thicken. It's ready for implantation. The ovaries are going to release the egg. The egg gets penetrated by one of the sperms. Then it goes through this whole part where it becomes a zygote. A zygote is basically like a pre-baby. It's an embryo. Once that happens, you're going to have multiple cell divisions cells, the morula, which is just a whole bunch of cells splitting apart, and then the, plas the blastocyst. Once it's at the blastocyst, it will eventually just attach itself to the uterine wall. Oh, I went over that. And implantation. Okay. So once the blastocyst begins to specialize, it's going to develop different parts of tissues. Remember, when you're starting off, you're a blank canvas. As cell division happens in the embryo, Certain parts start to specialize in certain areas, and that's how you start to form the skin, the nervous system, the bones, and you basically end up with a baby once all that specialization happens. Uh, in order for it to go through that, it's going to go to gastrulation. Gastrulation is the formation of the three layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the 
endoderm. The ectoderm and the endoderm will happen first. It's going to be the inside and the outside layer. As time goes by and you start getting um, cells that are getting more and more specialized, they're going to form the mesoderm. Um, the ectoderm is going to produce your nervous system and skin. The endoderm is going to form blood vessels, muscles, bones, and your gonads. And then the endoderm is going to be all of the major systems. So you're going to have the digestive system, lining of the organs, a bunch of intestines. There's going to be some parts of the respiratory and excretory system as well. Like I said, most of your systems will be formed in the endoderm. So neurulation. Neurulation is basically just prepping for the actual nervous system. After gastrulization happens and you have your three layers, basically the mesoderm will start to create this thing called a notochord. So a notochord is basically like a pre-backbone. It's going to happen in any animal that falls under the phylum chordata. Chordata, again, spinal cord. So it's going to basically pinch itself. It's going to develop, and then the ectoderm near it is going to thicken, and it's going to form that weird plate, and it's going to fold in. Once it folds in, it basically is going to fold over and you're going to actually end up with that opening. And that opening will eventually create the spinal cord and the brain. And that's how it's going to develop. That's where you're going to have your whole neural tube. Alright, so the placenta. Um, after eight weeks of development, being the embryo becomes a fetus. So embryo first, fetus after. By the end of the first three months, you're going to start getting the actual formation of the organ. So at three months, you sort of get a baby. Not yet, but you have the beginning. So while the organs won't be fully developed, they're going to start having the major organs set in place. You're going to have some muscular development. Again, not all of it, just the beginnings of your actual systems. The baby will start trying reflexes, so like kicking and stuff. Again, not fully, but it's going to start. The baby's going to be about 8 centimeters long, about 28 grams. As it goes on to the later months, you're actually going to have more and more tissue development and specialization of all the organs. Um, during the last three months, you'll see the biggest boost. So if you've ever seen someone who's pregnant, last three months, they go from like sort of a belly to like a bigger belly because the baby just grows so quickly in preparation for birth. So months four to five, you have the heart, which is loud enough for you to hear. Um, bones will continue to replace the cartilage form. So this part specifically, if you've ever held a baby and you're afraid to hold them. Now babies, they do have bones, but the bones are very, they're not as tight as yours. Like if I fell off a table, I could break my arm. If my niece who is two fell off a table, her bones haven't hardened like that yet. So she could just bounce back and she's fine. So babies, I'm not telling you to drop a baby. Please do not drop a baby. But their bones are still very flexible, so they they can handle a lot. Um, they can have a layer of soft hair over the skin, and then the mom will start to feel that movement or quote-unquote butterflies in their stomach. Um, any hair that a child is born with can and probably will fall off. They grow their own. That's just baby hair. Months 7 through 8, so basically the fetus will just randomly double in, in mass. Like I told you, just randomly decides that I'm going to be a baby now. So you have the lungs and other organs going through the major changes. Again, the main goal is to make sure that the child is viable outside the uterus. Um, the fetus will slowly start to regulate its own temperature. If they are born premature and they can't do that, that's why they end up in the in the ICU under like lamps and stuff because the baby themselves cannot regulate their own temperature. Then you finally have the central nervous system and the lungs that completely develop. Again, if a child is premature, they may have lung issues or issues with their nervous system because they didn't get to develop that in the uterus. And that's it. That's all of our talk on the reproductive system. Um, in lab, you guys should be watching a documentary on the actual process so we can go into more detail as to what happens at which month.